Hi, my name is Dr. Rose Beck from Hematopathology here at University Hospitals of Cleveland Case Medical Center. And I'm here to give a brief overview of leukemias and lymphomas as I see them from a clinical standpoint. So I usually see a patient for workup of leukemia if they have an elevated white blood cell count. This is usually in the 10,000s range or above. The first thing to differentiate a malignant process, though, um, from a non-malignant one is you need to rule out reactive causes, which is actually the most common cause for an elevated white blood cell count. So this would include things like uh, neutrophilia, very common in a hospital setting. Uh, reactive lymphocytosis can also occur. We see this commonly after MI, for example, and in viral infection. And those are probably your two main types of reactive uh, leukocytosis. These can be ruled out on a, a combination of clinical presentation and um, other findings in the lab. Usually a, a good clinical history will help you differentiate this between a rule-out react uh, malignant process. And in a malignant process, we would typically see atypical cells and or blasts. Blasts being the most immature cells of the hematopoietic system. So if we see lots of blasts, and in your textbooks you'll read more than 20% as a cutoff for specifically calling acute myeloid leukemia. The percentage can vary, <clears throat> but is often very high for acute lymphoid leukemia as well. That's when we, the large number of blasts tips us off to an acute leukemia. And we want to differentiate the lineage of the two, whether it is lymphoid or myeloid, and we do that by flow cytometry which is a very useful tool uh, looking at specific markers on cell surfaces. In the lineage line, we have B cells, which are usually distinguished by the presence of CD19, CD20, CD22, and especially in ALL, CD10, among other markers. And in the T lineage, we see markers with lower number, numbers, such as CD3, CD5, and CD7. And early T cell leukemias are often double negative for CD4 and CD8, although they may have one or both of those markers. On the myeloid side, we see markers such as CD13 and CD33 and CD117. And then, of course, CD34 defines blasts usually in either the lymphoid or myeloid lineages. So if we have a high white count, but we don't see lots, lots of blasts, but the majority of what we're seeing on the peripheral blood smear are atypical cells, again, we want to go down this lineage pathway. Are these myeloid? or lymphoid. And sometimes we use flow cytometry, although most often we use morphology on the peripheral blood smear. Myeloid disorders that are chronic fall into two main categories, the myelodysplastic syndromes, or the MDS um, disorders, and the myeloproliferative. We call those MPNs for myeloproliferative neoplasms. And sometimes it's easy for people to get these two confused. And an easy way to think about these is that in myelodysplastic syndromes, you have too few of certain cells in your blood, so you have cytopenias. And in myeloproliferative disorders in general, you have too many cells circulating in your peripheral blood, so you have cytoses. And any of the three cell lines in the bone marrow can be affected. You can, most commonly, you have uh, anemia and MDS, but you can also have thrombocytopenia and leukopenia as well. The same goes for the myeloproliferative neoplasms. You can have too many red cells, so that's polycythemia vera. You can have too many platelets, and that's essential thrombocytosis or thrombocytemia. You can also have too many white blood cells. And of note, these are mature in contrast to the blasts that we see in the acute leukemias. And this the most common disorder associated with um, High white cells in the myeloproliferative category is chronic myelogenous leukemia, which you all know is associated with the Philadelphia chromosome. In both of these disorders, what's happening is you have an abnormal stem cell clone. So this is at the level of hematopoiesis in the bone marrow. And in the myelodysplastic syndromes, you have ineffective hematopoiesis. So the clone is trying to make lots of cells but these cells are not functional and they end up dying in the bone marrow. Whereas in myeloproliferative disorders, 
the cells make it out of the bone marrow. And you have too many cells going into the circulation and often to the spleen as well. So you get extramedullary hematopoiesis in the spleen and sometimes even in the liver. Morphologically, you tend to see cellular atypia or dysplasia in the myelodysplastic syndromes. And you don't see so much dysplasia in the myeloproliferative neoplasms. And these morphologic changes occur both in blood and in bone marrow. The important thing to remember about all of these disorders is they can all progress to AML over time because, again, the, the defect is at the level of a stem cell clone in the bone marrow. So we talked about atypical cells uh, seen on a peripheral blood smear in a patient with high white count. And we talked some about the chronic myeloid disorders. Now we're going to move to the chronic lymphoid disorders, which will be the most common types of leukemia that are seen, especially in Western countries. And another word for these chronic lymphoid process, processes is low-grade lymphoproliferative disorder. So you may see that term in your reading. Anytime we talk about a lymphoid process, you'll see a theme here. We want to differentiate between B cells and T cells. The B cell low-grade LPDs are much, much, much more common than the T cell ones. The B cell ones, um, the most common of, is chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, often found incidentally on routine CBC, and many patients um, actually end up dying of other causes rather than their CLL. It's a pretty indolent disease in some patients. There are also less common circulating B cell neoplasms such as mantle cell lymphoma and marginal zone lymphoma. And all of these we will subtype by flow cytometry. They each has its own distinctive marker panel. As I mentioned, the T cell chronic lymphoproliferative disorders are pretty rare, and these are things such as T cell PLL or prolymphocytic leukemia, T cell large granular lymphocyte leukemia, adult T cell leukemia, which is associated with um, HTLV1, which boards like you to know, but you'll probably never see in your lifetime. Circulating mycosis fungoides, which is actually a skin lymphoma, but when you see it in the blood, we call that Cesare syndrome. And again, all of these are distinguished individually by flow cytometry. So we talked about the hematologic malignancies that present primarily in the blood. Those are the leukemias. The ones that present primarily in the tissue that are of lymphoid origin are the lymphomas. And a lot of times this is confusing because many of these lymphomas can have a circulating component, in which case we call it, uh, there's a leukemic phase that goes along with the lymphoma. It's actually the same disease, but it depends on where it presents, whether you call it lymphoma or leukemia. Lymphomas are broadly divided into uh, the Hodgkin lymphoma subtypes and the non-Hodgkin lymphomas. Of the Hodgkin lymphomas, the most common one is classical Hodgkin lymphoma, which has four distinct subtypes. And then there is a nodular lymphocyte predominant Hodgkin lymphoma, which is relatively rare, but is important to distinguish from the classical subtypes because the two are treated differently. The non-Hodgkin lymphomas are, again, of lymphoid origin, and you guessed it, would need to be distinguished between T-cell origin and B-cell origin. Similar to the circulating low-grade lymphoproliferative disorders, all the T-cell lymphomas are relatively rare, and I won't go into detail here because you, I don't think you'll need to know that. On the B-cell side, we divide these mainly into low-grade lymphomas and high grade. And this distinction is a morphologic distinction that has clinical consequence. So high grade lymphomas just look nastier under the microscope and are composed of larger cells. They divide and are more aggressive clinically uh, than the low grade lymphomas. The high grade lymphomas consist of entities such as Burkitt's, which has a characteristic translocation with CMYK, combining it with the IGH gene on chromosome 14. We got the most common uh, high-grade lymphoma in adults is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, of which there are multiple subtypes. And diffuse large B-cell lymphoma does not have a specific translocation associated, but you can, associated with it, but you can find MYC translocations, as well as translocations that are in low-grade lymphomas that have transformed to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. On the low-grade side, the most common indolent B-cell lymphoma is follicular lymphoma. 
and this is associated with a translocation that puts BCL2 with the IGH gene um, on chromosome 14. We also have mantle cell lymphoma, which has a translocation putting cyclin D1 on chromosome 11 next to the IGH gene on chromosome 14. And then we have marginal zone lymphoma, which is not associated with one specific translocation in general. And a group of these marginal zone lymphomas are called the maltomas. So they occur in uh, mucosal sites, such as the GI tract and the lung. And finally, we have small lymphocytic lymphoma, which is the tissue form of CLL. These will be the most common low-grade B-cell lymphomas. So for all of these low-grade lymphomas, it's important to keep in mind that they can transform or become high-grade. In SLL, transforming to DLBCL, we call that a Richter's transformation. And I don't know why it has a special name for SLL. Follicular lymphoma also can transform to diffuse large B-cell lymphoma, as can, can mantle, and rarely marginal zone. You don't see that very often. So today we covered a very large number of hematologic neoplasms many of which present in the blood, the acute leukemias, which include your ALLs and your AMLs. And then we have the chronic leukemias, some of which are myeloid, and this includes the MDSs and the MPNs. And then the lymphoid, which are the most common, such as CLL, and circulating forms of follicular or mantle cell or marginal zone lymphoma. In the tissue, we have the lymphomas. That includes the Hodgkin lymphoma categories and the non-Hodgkin lymphoma categories, most of which are B-cell origin. And conveniently, we like to divide these into high-grade and low-grade keeping in mind that a lot of these low-grade B-cell lymphomas can circulate and present as chronic lymphoid leukemias.